wonder what Ape's topic there's never been an FRQ on. Mr. Smeez. Hydrogen fuel cells? No, Mr. no, Smeez. there was one last year. Geothermal? Mr. Smeez. Class is about to start and I have a question. Oh, sorry, David, what's your question? What's the difference between a good and a great Ape student? Huh. That's a great question. I should make a video about this. Shout out to David, who is a real ape student of mine this year and really did ask this insightful question at the beginning of class a few weeks ago. Now, there are a ton of ways that you could potentially answer this question, but to me, the difference between a good ape student and a great ape student is what they do with new information. Now, good ape students know how to identify important concepts and less important concepts in what they're learning and how to study that information and commit it to memory for the test. But great ape students, true scholars, they don't just identify important information and learn how to recall it for the test. They build frameworks of new information and think about how it fits into their existing knowledge. They ask questions like, where have I seen this effect before in my everyday life? How does it relate to what I learned in history class last week? And of course, if you're in the Midwest like I am, does this mean we're gonna have more snow days or less snow days in the future? Today, I wanna try to help everyone develop this systematic way of thinking that leads to a deeper understanding of environmental science instead of just a collection of answers to weird trivia questions like, why is there so much salt in the ocean? And what's the most abundant gas in the atmosphere? So let's model this kind of thinking with unit five, where you either are learning about or already learned about how humans use land and the resulting environmental consequences. Since each of the different topics in unit five will cover some aspect of land use, we can use this very similar frame for thinking about almost every topic in unit five. Now, of course, first, we wanna establish some basic details about the type of land use. Then we can turn our attention to three key questions. First, what benefits do humans get from this land use? Why do we even do this in the first place? Second, what environmental and human related problems happen from this land use? And third, what solutions are there out there to still get the benefits of this land use with fewer of the problems? Now, before we go any further, I need to point out the fact that I didn't just pull these questions out of thin air. The college board actually provides these kinds of questions that they call enduring understandings for each topic. For every topic in unit five, the enduring understanding is either when humans use natural resources, they alter those systems, or humans can mitigate their impact and land and water resources through sustainable use. So these frames are really just built off of these enduring understandings that the college board has already suggested you think about in the course and exam description. With that established, let's review how we could use this framework to review topics 5.2 and 5.17, which both relate to forestry. Go ahead and pause the video now and click that link in the video description below so you can print or use a fillable PDF version of this unit five frame. All right, now that you have your own copy of the unit five framework that we're gonna be looking at, let's go through topics 5.2 and 5.17. Now, before we tackle these three key questions about forestry, we need to remember that first there's clear cutting or removing basically all the trees in an area. And then there's selective cutting or choosing certain trees to remove, usually based on their age or size. Then we'll take a look at our first key question. Why do humans cut down forests in the first place? And the answer is they wanna harvest the timber and sell it for use in some sort of raw material or it could be to make room for cities or crops or even to raise cattle. Next, we wanna ask what problems does this create for the environment? And in the case of clear cutting, especially, it increases runoff and soil erosion, leads to warmer soil and nearby streams, decreases habitats for animals that live in the forest, and it even increases atmospheric carbon levels. But what about humans? What problems does clear cutting possibly create for humans? Well, we may lose property to floods or landslides that result. We may not be able to hunt animals for food that lost their habitat due to the deforestation. And we may experience a warmer, less stable climate with more carbon in the atmosphere. And finally, what solutions do we have to still get the benefits of cutting trees down without as many of the problems? Now, the most obvious is selective cutting, which allows us to to still take some timber from a forest without making it so likely to experience increased runoff and erosion, habitat loss, and increased soil and stream temperature. But what about the benefits of growing crops, raising cattle, and building roads and cities that only come from clear cutting? After all, we can't really selectively cut our way to new cornfields or new shopping centers. Now, this is where we can really elevate our topic frames for unit five by connecting different topics together. At the bottom of each topic frame, there's a thinking like a mountain section where we can practice linking topics within units together, as well as connecting the topic we're viewing to a topic from a totally new unit. So the question here is where else in unit five can we look for additional solutions that will still allow us to get these benefits without so much clear cutting? Well, one place we could start is borrowing a solution from our 5.3 frame. We could 
use GMOs to increase yields per acre, which could reduce the need to clear more forested areas for farming. Or we could use crop rotation from our 5.15 frame so that soil doesn't lose its fertility and require new land to be opened up to replace unproductive soils. We could also look at the solutions for urban sprawl in topic 5.10. This could allow us to take advantage of mixed land use or zoning laws to encourage building up instead of out. This allows for more dense city living and limits the clearing of more forests for low density sprawling suburbs. And if we really want to weave a dense web of understanding like true ape scholars, we could try connecting to a topic from a different unit entirely. We could think back to unit four and make the connection that with the loss of trees in an area, the soil will have less organic matter. And that with less organic matter, it will have less ability to retain moisture and receive nutrients from the breakdown of that organic matter. Not to mention that the loss of root structure from clear cutting will cause more topsoil erosion. Now, you might be thinking right now, Mr. Smeens, this is super easy for you. You've been teaching this class for the past nine years. While this is true, I have a simple exercise that you can practice every day to make this kind of framework building second nature. Anytime you're covering a new topic or reviewing for an FRQ or a test, pick two vocab terms and ask yourself two questions about those vocab terms. How are concepts A and B similar and how are concepts A and B different? Now, I know this might seem really simple, but I promise if you're doing this every day, you're going to get better at this type of interconnected thinking. So let's try this with two random vocab terms from unit five, clear cutting and synthetic fertilizers. So we'll start with how they're similar. They both support valuable human actions like logging and farming. Clear cutting could be used to clear land for farming, which then might involve using synthetic fertilizers on the crop planted in place of those trees. They can also both contribute to climate change and habitat degradation, but in different ways. Clear cutting reduces carbon sinks, which leaves more carbon in the atmosphere, while producing synthetic fertilizers requires burning fossil fuels, which actively adds more carbon to the atmosphere. As for habitats, clear cutting directly removes forest habitats. While synthetic fertilizers can be washed off into nearby rivers or lakes by runoff and cause eutrophication, which can eventually create a dead zone in that habitat. So now that we've gone over these two different methods for integrating new information into your existing apes knowledge, let's take some time to practice. If you're up for a challenge, pause the video now and leave a comment below with either a topic to topic connection or a similarity in difference for any of these two vocab terms on the screen. I'll even pick a few of my favorite comments and give them a shout out at the beginning of the unit six framework video coming next week. And remember that you can grab a free copy of both of these frames that we went over today with that link in the video description below. Thanks so much for watching today, Ape Scholars. And as always, think like a mountain and write like a scholar.